I didn't know I could say no, as most women don't. Yeah, they don't know. Sure. Um, and I could see the unnecessary medical interventions and the, the, the trauma that the medical interventions were actually causing these poor women. When women are separated from their true nature, from what you might know as the gut instinct, yeah, just your wisdom. And if you keep in your head all the time, in your ego, in your thinking mind, you're going to be fearful and fear changes everything. Fear breeds more fear. The difference between a traumatic birth and an empowered birth will change the world. And if we build this tribe of strong women who are wise and understand these ancient techniques that can help empower women, it will change the world. Welcome to the Drake Michigan podcast. I'm delighted that we've got the wonderful Nikita Stark with us, a powerhouse, I've been told. Um, and uh, she's a founder of When Push Comes to Shove. Um, as, a, as an ignorant male, I've, I only came, came to understand about um, doula, what a doula was, um, sort of this time last year. And that was via someone, I think, who actually you, you may know as well, Nikita. I think, I think she came through your system, say I hate the word system, but through your your processes. And that's um Carly Stewart. She she worked with with me at the at the pub at the Crown when I had the, the pub. Um and now she's a doula um and she's helped a few of our friends who who have recently given birth as well. So I've learned a little bit, but I'm really keen to learn more and hopefully your story is going to inspire our viewers to get their power back, basically. So, Nikita, please, please tell me, I'm really interested. Um, how did you get to, 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 to this, this point of your path? I mean, what, what's inspired you? Is it, is it giving birth yourself? Is it, was it something else? Um, trauma. Trauma. It's always trauma. It's always trauma. Welcome to the pineal gland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> yeah, it was trauma. I had... I had my first baby in 2008. Um, yeah. I was 21 and very ignorant. There was something deep inside that kept telling me what I'm being told to do was wrong, but I didn't have the wherewithal to trust that. So I was told I was overdue and I had to be induced and I just did what I was told yeah. Oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. But but do you know what? I don't have any regrets because I wouldn't be here talking to you now if I hadn't gone through that. That's right, yeah. So I had a, a very traumatic first birth. Um, I I thought the, the pain was indescribable. Um, I'm not going to mince my words. I felt raped. Um, I was, they were giving me vaginal exams without my consent. I didn't know I could say no, as most women don't, yeah. I don't know. Oh, and I thought, what's the point in all this? And I, anyway, long story short, I, I, want, I don't want to hound on that too much because it's kind of irrelevant at this point. Um, when I had her, I spoke to my grandmother, who to me was the wisest, beautiful, most amazing woman ever. She's an Indian sage <laughs> and oh. she had eight children. And I, th I kept thinking, how did Nanny do this? Yeah. And, um, I spoke to my nan and I said, Nanny, how do so many women do this? How did you do this eight times? And, you know, the trauma like this, how do people do it when it's the trauma is so normal? And she said, my darling, what you've experienced is not normal. It's common. And a light bulb went off in my head. Right. And then I got on the war path and <laughs> I started my um, journey into midwifery. That ended very, very quickly. Bullets have left guns slower. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um I thought no this isn't right I, I from what I could see it was like a meat market and it was a conveyor belt system of we want the beds filled and emptied filled and emptied it, midwife is meant to mean with woman but it doesn't mm -hmm. it means with system and I didn't want to be a part of that um and I could see the unnecessary medical interventions and the the, the trauma that the medical interventions were actually causing these poor women um and I I I couldn't be part of that. So I did a doula course. Um, that wasn't quite for me either. There was something missing. 
um, it, it was a great course, but it didn't it didn't align with me. Now, long story short, I suppose I'm what you call a traditional birth attendant. I'm not a doula. I'm not a midwife. I have learned from some incredible wise women. Um, I've learned ancient birth, uh, like traditional methods rather than, you know, clinical. So I suppose yeah. I'm a specialist in physiological birth and I've got 15 years of experience um, and I have attended beautiful birth after beautiful birth. And in 2020, um, I was pregnant with my second daughter. Now, I have, sadly, I've lost nine babies between my two. Oh. Um, but it's okay. It's okay that my earth angels are here. <laughs> They're meant to be here. But mm. when I had Dottie, my little one, it was in the middle of um, the shit show in 2020. And I thought, oh, I'm not interested in any of this. Yeah. I just had her at home and I didn't call them <laughs> nice. it was the best experience of my life shortly after that independent midwives in the UK lost their insurance and I thought well that's that then but that's our last chance of autonomy right. so I did too I'm, I'm also a singer songwriter and I released yes. a song called breathe again to spread awareness of the problem and to try and raise money for an indemnity product for independent midwives but it soon took a completely different turn. And here we are now, um, when push comes to shove, is the fastest growing alternative maternity structure in the world. So we're in 10 countries and I'm training as many birth keepers and doulas as possible. I've had midwives and doctors train with me and um, I'm hoping to like form an army all over the world. So, you know, we're filling the gaps because the maternity system will crash and we're here to catch. It will crash. Well, it's our house. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, again, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not very well today. That's why I sound like this, and my that's, no, brain. That's fine. Fine. <laughs> you're still still a powerhouse, even if you're under the weather. I know. Um, I know. I, I think you did um, a, a conference, didn't you? Like a big conference, like recently, where I think you got a stand innovation, if I remember. Could you tell us a bit more about that? I mean, it's. I think it, it's. I mean, I was getting a few goosebumps. Me and Aunt always say, when 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 spirits with us, not to get the too woo woo. Or the truth is that yeah. um, you know it makes my um, it makes my my hair stand up on my arms, you know. And and it's so important because all this lost knowledge and information is it's it's returning it's coming back mm -hmm. um and it's almost like our ancestors like you know you say about your grandmother and um, this this stuff that you know this 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 knowledge that's been hidden from us or you know that's been lost you know yeah. it's it, it's 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 coming back um and it's so important and, and never more so in relation to you know holistic medicine and you know i i, I don't like saying birthing but you know because that's the the term but you know um our, our son bringing our sons and daughters into the world in 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 the best and possible way you know so um yeah tell us a bit more about your stand innovation which what was the name of the conference again i do remember um... yeah, it was the better way conference that was it yes yeah for health i i was introduced to dr tess laurie and she interviewed me and she asked me to come and speak at the better way conference and it was a turning point both in my career and in my life um i i've always i've always been viewed as a hippie um <laughs> who doesn't know anything um and I was so scared because there was about 400 doctors in that room and there was a lovely lovely German doctor um and I'll never forget what he said to me he could see I was scared and he said don't worry just go and do it and I got off the stage and he said don't you ever be afraid to do that again you were born to do this wow lovely um, beautiful and uh, yeah it was it was very humbling and I I didn't have any speech prepared I never do because birth is is oxytocin, it's love. So I decided to go and speak from the heart. I didn't yeah. want to prepare anything that didn't feel organic. Um, mm -hmm. So I just spoke. And uh, my friends thought I was mad. They're like, you're not going to have any notes? I was like, no, no, I don't feel I should. So I just spoke. And for the first time in my life, I felt that my message was being heard. I, I, I mean, at one point, I even had a misguided attempt at getting a bit of respect because I went to med school and I thought, well, if I've got letters behind my name, mm -hmm. people might pay attention. Totally misguided. I left very, very quickly and I didn't like it at all. And then um, during the last couple of years, 
I went on a few shows and did a few talks and it seems to have happened exactly as it should. So I'm really mm -hmm. grateful that I listened to my higher self. Yeah. Rather than trying to make things happen in my own strength. And we have lost a significant amount of wisdom. And I think that's half the problem. Well, it's most the problem. When women are separated from their true nature, from what you might know as the gut instinct, yeah, just your wisdom. And if you keep in your head all the time, in your ego, in your thinking mind, you're going to be fearful and fear changes everything. Fear breeds more fear. And I believe when we look at the system, I can see the problem very clearly. So the presence of intelligence without wisdom is fucking dangerous, to put it bluntly. Yeah. Because we don't have access to that inner knowing. Look, put it this way, I haven't I haven't seen a woman's instinct wrong in fifty right. years ever. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we're so obsessed with controlling outcomes and making things happen and having an agenda, like a woman should have this happen to them in order for this to happen. Well, what about what she wants? Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. And I think I'm, I, I try to make this very, very clear. A lot of people come to when push comes to shove because they're being so frightened by the system and they're saying, oh, you know, got to be induced, big baby, placenta will stop working and various other nonsense. And they almost come to me for um, reassurance of the opposite. And I'm like, no, I, I'm not here to tell you everything's going to be fine and give you some natural reassurance. What about what you want and what do you feel? Because... Yeah. We're not going to be, there's already a system that tells women what to do. I'm not getting involved in that. No. Because that's disempowering. So I would always encourage women to actually drop down into trust and to actually feel what they're feeling and connect with their baby and make an informed decision rather than from a bullying standpoint or a, co a coercive standpoint. That's never going to work. Empowerment no. is when we have control the whole way through. And even if a birth ends up in a, cesarean operation as long as that woman has made choices herself then empowerment will occur it's when your birth is taken from you or you hand it over because it's the most intimate time of your life it's so it's a rite of passage mm -hmm. it's a very spiritual experience and i always make the comparison right because when you're giving birth you need to release oxytocin which is your love hormone it's a very shy hormone yeah and it, it will leave at the first sign of danger so when you release adrenaline Adrenaline will stop oxytocin flow. Now, you release oxytocin when you have sex. Can you imagine if you're in this beautiful embrace and then some prick opens the door, turns the lights on, starts shining a light in your eye and saying, you all right? <laughs> well, it is 2023. Anything can happen, <laughs> right? But, yeah. well, I've, heard, I've heard that, isn't it? Like some women, you know, when, when they're in that relaxed state, I mean, I, I've never had children, so I, I can't speak from experience, certainly not, but... Um, uh, that they they it can almost feel orgasmic when you're in the right setting some people have orgasmic births don't they I mean I again you know I don't know it's not my arena certainly not <laughs> but um you know it, it's just so interesting that you know when when this knowledge is applied or you know like you say if you're going to tell a woman how to um you know give birth then you, you're becoming the very thing that you're trying to move away from it's, it's a little bit similar to kind of my arena which obviously I know more about but you know, if we're if we're fighting the system, you know, then we're becoming it. You know, be careful. You know, be careful when you fight the monsters, lest you become one. You know, it's, it is about giving power back, like Anne said, to to the individual for them to. You know, us giving our power away to anything is what's got us in this mess in the first place. So yeah. we don't want to recreate the same thing in any any arena. And, and speaking uh, of the oxytocin, the, the love, the love is is there. I mean, even for the the father. I mean, I've I've only witnessed my own daughter being born 17 years ago and the the instant love is there you know um and it's just the most beautiful thing and 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 like during the shit show period they were creating a situation where fathers couldn't even be there and and um just horrendous situation but yeah for me it just seems like there is a, a system put in place here to create trauma first to the the mother and then to the baby as well. And and it's just upside down. It's just so typical of this bloody realm that we're on, that it's an upside down world. Uh, absolutely. And I really agree with what you said about, you know, don't fight the beast. 
And mm. I truly believe we don't need to criticize. We just need to create. Mm. And yeah. if, we don't, if we, if we focus, well, it's, it's all well and good being aware of the problem, but cool. What are you going to do about it? If you keep criticizing and, you know, shaming all the time. Well, what, what energetic level does that feel to you? Like it's, mm. It's like trying to put out a fire with a fire. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I say yeah. that all the time. It was one thing that I realized when everyone's so busy fighting the system still. And, and again, it's all this energy outward. They'll get you to look at anything, anything else, any kind of construct, any any kind of system that they give you, any kind of box to put you in, rather than getting you going, hang on a minute. The power is with us. We are the creators. We don't need you. You need our energy. So we're going to take our energy and place it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. We are these core creators of, of the one infinite um whatever you want to call that infinite um, energy, that intelligent energy. So we just, we harness it and we give it back to ourselves and then we give it out in love to others. That's how I view it. Yeah. Stop fighting the system. You, you're just creating the same thing. So it's it's such a beautiful thing that we are returning, like back to, you know, looking at where we've come from. Um, and, and yeah, it's just such a powerful thing. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Like just imagine a room full of lamps and the lamps in this analogy are us and the electricity that lights up the lamps. That's our greater consciousness. And mm -hmm. if we shine our light, we'll shine brighter than a million dim bulbs. I can assure you. So yeah. it's about making a choice from love, not fear. And Definitely. You know, a few of you may be watching thinking, yeah, but I actually had problems in my birth. And yeah, I totally get that. And I'm not here to say birth is inherently safe. I'm not, but it's certainly not inherently dangerous. Childbirth no. is safe as life. Sometimes shit happens, but most of the time, if you're connected and you trust the physiological process without letting more fear into your environment, more stimuli to create adrenaline. I, okay, put it this way. In 15 years, my C-section rate is 3%. The NHS is 40. Wow. Yeah, wow. And it just goes to show that system, doesn't it? You know, um, the, the, it, it, the system wants its kind of um, it, its property being, you know, channeled through that state or that, you know, to contract, you know, a, a woman's contractions to be delivered by the doctor on a ward, you know, and you become a ward of the state, a ward of the court, you know, that that they, they call it delivery, livery, um, and it wants its stock, you know, um, and that's the system. It doesn't, it, it doesn't have an inherent curve for the woman. It's not there to empower. It's, it's there to do completely the opposite mm -hmm. um, and take that away from, you know, take that choice away. And it is that freedom of choice and the, the, ultimate freedom of choice as we know in cymatics as we know that we are beings of frequency is exactly that is that you know like bill hicks would say in it and love or fear love or fear which one do you want and that yeah, system wants fear. Fear. And we want love cheesy yeah, as it is yeah, man yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not we were hippie dippy but it's, it's, it's true. exactly that, true. It? we have a choice in any given moment we can we can choose love or fear and i don't mean love as an emotion i mean love as a state of being Definitely. and when we, when we choose love our, de our decisions will will feel right and, and we won't overthink things all the time look if we think that we're separate waves in the ocean the ocean becomes a very scary place but when we realize we are all one we can take a step back and have a look look i'll use a metaphor because we're talking about birth look when when a sperm and an egg come together and they create eventually an embryo those cells start to divide and they're, they're given jobs like we all are. You're a lung cell, you're a kidney cell, you're a heart cell. But what happens when one of those cells deviates and it goes away and it does its own thing? We call that cancer. Mm. We have a spiritual malignancy because we have so many humans that are so separated from consciousness that it is causing a malignancy and yeah. breeds more fear and more fear and more fear. Yeah. Now, I'm sure most of you watching understand that all form begins with a thought. Yeah, yeah, we're creators. Yeah, we are. We are. We are creators. This is this is the kingdom. This is the kingdom. The kingdom is with the two temples, the right and left hemispheres. You know, we we you know, as above, so below. It's absolutely in us. Yeah, definitely. I see birth go wrong when there's fear and when. They're not unable to get out of their heads. And that's not a blame game. That's that's a product of the system. And I don't think for a second 
that the well-meaning individuals that are working within the system are sitting up at night writing notes of waste of tissue. No. They're not. They're doing what they think is right. Of course. It's programming. Yeah. yeah. So it it's fine. You know, I would say when you've got someone who's, I don't know, maybe not on your wavelength and you feel that you're being confronted, just remember in, inside every confrontational person is a, is a scared inner child. And yes. you disarm them with love. Um, I mean, we, we have, I can't even count how many cases I've had at Wimpish come to shove of social services referrals because women haven't towed the line. Yeah, I, I, that, that's something yes, that I was yes. going to mention. This it's is this problem. this is the problem with the system itself, isn't it? They they just create that fear. But obviously, as creators, and they know this. And in the past few years, will describe that as well. That they the more fear they push on it, the more we're going to create an issue for the rest of us. And uh, so, yeah, if there is a system in place there that is going to create fear for the birth, for the for the mother, for the child, that child's going to have trauma before they even breathe their first breath in this in this realm and uh yeah but then you've got the oxymoron there of like when women know this they start having all this guilt and like oh my god i feel stressed what am i gonna do like chill don't 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 overthink it just go within like yes we have stressful times but we're allowed to have stressful times we're having a human experience yeah not about fighting like we don't resist we can feel our feelings but it's transcending it and going above that and okay. I, I want to give a very typical example of what happens in the system in 2023, right? Because so many women will align with this, relate to this. And if you are triggered, I do apologize, but it's better to know and you can help other women. So yeah. a woman is told they're overdue. I'll put that mm -hmm. in inverted commas. Um, just, just quickly to give you some perspective on the word overdue. There's an yeah. obsession that women have to have their babies by 40 weeks of pregnancy. And right. this, yeah. not, this was set by a, a, an obstetrician called Neagle, and he based his gestation calculations on the lunar calendar, and we still use it today. Um, mm. That mm. There's an obsession that the, the woman has to give birth by 40 weeks, and that's that. They don't take any consideration of the woman's cycles, how long the cycle is. I've had women who have known when they got pregnant because they only had sex just that once, but yeah. I'm like, no, you're this pregnant. I mean, you're tall. <laughs> so you literally, you literally go in it. You, 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 they're going against themselves and their own instincts. It's this constant getting women to disconnect from their intuition, from from their own bodies, mm -hmm. from the things that they, you know, as the system does. We can see it right in front of our faces, but they'll tell us black is white and white is black. You yeah, know? but unfortunately, because the, the it's like the Milgram experiment, isn't it? Like. <laughs> If that someone of an authority in a white coat tells you to do something and it will harm you, you'll do it anyway. Yes, but yep. they're told to come in for an induction, so they're given medication to start labor. Now, there are lots of methods of induction, but the most popular one, which is usually resorting in because of other failed methods, and, and don't let them tell you that it will always work because induction often fails. Right. So you'll go in. They'll start you off on propress, propress or prostin, which is a gel or a, like a tampon sort of thing they insert to the vagina to soften the cervix. If that doesn't work and other things don't work, they will bring up the big guns and it's called syntocinon. And syntocinon, oh, if you're watching in America, it's called pitocin over there. Right. Syntocinon is a synthetic version of oxytocin, which is our natural hormone that facilitates labor. Now, what it does it, it doesn't work like natural oxytocin. So natural oxytocin reaches your brain and it can put you into that euphoric birth bubble and makes you feel all that love and safety and ability to birth. But syntocinon basically blasts your uterus over and over again with very strong unnatural contractions very close together. So mum asks for an epidural, unsurprisingly, because it's excruciatingly painful. Yeah. Now the epidural... Um, Women aren't told what's in it. It's a combination of babuvacaine and fentanyl. And they inject it into your spine and it renders you on your back. If you are lying on your back when you give birth, your pelvic outlet decreases by 30%. Wow. And then you, ha you haven't got the gravity to try and bring the baby down. So you're more likely to have an instrumental delivery or a C-section because your body can't... Would you go for a poo lying down? Probably not. You can't... <laughs> 
open up your, your body to let the baby out. So the, the, you can't feel the extra pain of the contractions because the epidural is in, but the epidural slows down the labor, so they up the syntocin on, and so it goes. Now, because of this strength of the contractions, your baby, the, the oxygen flow to the placenta is being compromised. Yeah. Eventually... They will see D cells on the CTG monitor, which is how they monitor your contractions and the baby's heart rate. And the baby's heart rate just goes down, and they're like, "Oh my god, we've got to get this baby out!" And so, fear, fear, fear. Fear, and then fear. women think that, "Oh, thank God you've saved my baby." Uh -huh. yeah. These were contractions that were facilitated by the syntocin. Yeah, and if it hadn't started in the first place, yeah. would you it's need? Trick baby? Wow, it's trickery. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just that system, isn't it? It's like yeah. one thing leads to the next, to the next, to the next. Any kind of pharma, any kind of doctoring, pharmacia come, means magic, doesn't it? It's, yeah, it's, like yeah. a, it's, it's a black magic, you know, it's just like any other that they use in the system. It's all a big spell that's been cast upon us. Um, and we're just, it's like we're awakening from the dream like that. And and, and that kind of, well, yeah, like I said, it's just complete disconnect from what's, what kind of makes common sense really because I, mm. we were talking before you came on Nikita and I was saying you know I've, I've not had a baby but it would just make common sense to me and sometimes believe me I, I lack it in other areas <laughs> but you know to put a woman on her back mm -hmm. you know is just you know just just gravity alone just the positioning in itself just doesn't make sense you know to, to put her feet in stirrups and strap her on her back when a baby needs like say and gravity I don't think is what we tell they tell us either but let's not go there but like as you say just it, 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 it when you just lay it out like that it, it sounds like it's just a but horrific it's, story it sounds it? like it's just common fucking sense really <laughs> yeah. you know and and, yeah. and again the, the the system's in place and you're normalized into like as a, as a child growing up, you're watching these stupid programs on a Saturday night and, you know, the woman's giving birth on a TV and, you, and you're seeing that. And that's your normal yes. view then of what a birth should be. Which is why doctor programs about doctors, programs about the police, they, they love it, the dramas, so that we mm. go, oh, this is, the, you know, trust them, trust the authority, James Bond <laughs> films. Oh, the, 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 the M MI5 and MI6, they're there to help but us. But that's taking away it's your like... power again, isn't it? Because you're basically giving your power to absolutely everything else. Everyone else is yeah. a same. Maybe but yourself. Boom, yes. Yeah, oh, it's dark. That, but the thing is, don't take things in a very black and white way if you're watching this, because, right, sometimes there is a need for medical intervention, sometimes, yeah. right? And I don't want to poo poo it all because medical intervention saved my life. I broke my back in 2007. Thank God I had someone to help me. Yeah. But don't give away your power at the first, like, hurdle, right? Just ask questions. Now, I can't be so black and white to say never give birth on your back because there are always variables. And this is why it's so important to listen to your body. If your body is telling you to lay down, do it. Because sometimes mm -hmm. a baby can come so fast and the body is genius. Your body will say, can you lay down? Because this baby needs to come a bit slower before you get torn. Yeah. So oh, the body yeah, will yeah. do amazing things. But most of the time, the body will say, get upright. So just before you push, you go for a period called transition. You're between eight and 10 centimeters. That again, another myth that we all have to have cervix at 10 centimeters to give birth. Have all our babies got the same size head? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> that time before you start pushing, you what will have the only bit of adrenaline you'll need. And if you watch a normal physiological birth, a woman will stand up and quite often try to grab hold of something that isn't there because mm -hmm. she'll start getting this guttural. They sound like cows. <laughs> they start yeah. really bearing down, right? Yeah. So that bit is necessary, but they will stand up or they will squat or they will get on all fours because that's what their body is yeah. telling them to do. Yeah. I have seen the most incredible things. I was at a birth last year and mum was on all fours. Head came out, very, very exciting. Now with the next contraction, you would expect to see shoulders, but mm. I didn't. And I thought, oh, shoulder dystocia, which is where the shoulder gets stuck, right. which is can be an emergency and I just thought I trust what she's about to do I didn't say anything and before the thought had even finished she just chucked one leg forward like a running start wow. and, I and I was like oh like wow. I was in awe I didn't need to say anything before yeah. I didn't finish the thought mum did what mum needed to do wow. because she wow. to her body. and 
this is where it can get complicated if you're going to be in your head about things. So let's take, for example, meconium. Meconium is the baby's first poo. Yeah. <laughs> sticky, sort of tarry stuff. When it's seen in the system, it's often a massive hoo-ha and, oh, my God, panic, panic, panic. So what mm. they are worried about, which is a genuine concern, is called meconium aspiration syndrome. So the baby um, aspirates the meconium. Right. It can lead to a fatality. But if we look at the, the actual data, the presence of meconium doesn't mean babies in distress, but the lack of meconium doesn't mean to say baby's fine either. So where do we go with this information? We listen. We listen to our gut. If you're going to rely on just logical stuff all the time, it's going to fail you, and it can also make you very, very fearful. But yeah. I always see women tune into themselves and they actually know what to do if you can't get there fine say okay i need someone to make a decision for me i'm not saying you have to do it one way or the other there are options mm -hmm. but I've been, i'll give you two different examples of, of meconium at birth i was at a birth once and i saw meconium very early on in labor if i'd seen it right at the end it wouldn't worry me the baby's digestive system is mature they're about to be born it's normal to see some meconium but i saw it very early on and i thought Hmm. Okay. So I told the mum that there's meconium. Here are the risks, the absolute and relative risks of meconium aspiration syndrome. What would you like to do? Yeah. And she said, Can you give me a few minutes? I said, yep. Yeah. So I went back in and she said, I, I feel fine. And I know the baby's fine. So that's her choice. She knew the risks, but I had then had to take myself out the room and calm myself down because I ain't bringing my fear into this woman's birthing space. Yeah. Mum was right baby was fine then the other side of that I was at another birth and I saw meconium very late in labor and I thought okay well that's normal but again I'm telling mum this is meconium what would you like to do and she said I feel something's wrong so off we went to hospital and she was right baby yeah. didn't need a bit of help so I'm not here to say birth at home all the time it's much safer although statistically it is safer to birth at home but I'm not here to say you have to do this and have to do that. What do you want to do? Yes. Yeah, if yeah. you are fearful, the last place you want to birth is at home. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you can already tell I'm a massive home birth advocate. But if you are fearful of your home environment and you feel scared to give birth at home, do not give birth there because fear will cause more problems. As creators, we are yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you go to hospital, go to hospital. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's the same if you know if I did a one to one with somebody and you know like uh, the game, I mean I, I I I don't kind of advise anybody to do anything, but it's just an as an as, as an example, you know, um, a guy came on and, and he said, I've cancelled my direct debit to the council tax. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fight them. Um, and um, but the thing is, I've not slept for two nights. Um, I I can't sleep, Carly. And I was just like. Hmm. you know, it's not for me to tell them what to do. What is it you want to do? You know, if, if I would suggest if you're in fear about these things, then, you know, you're not ready. Um, and I think it, we, we've got out of touch with our own senses. You know, I, I did a, yeah. a great podcast with a guy called Arthur Christian. And because of all the constructs that were given and all this information, misinformation, you know, we do have to trust nature. We have to go back to trusting our senses, to being present in that moment. And that how you describe those two, you know, different ladies' situations, they they sensed, they they were in nature, they were in the present moment, and they knew what to do because they were they were in tune with that. And I think in all um, walks of life, especially in if it is a great awakening or not, you know, yeah. that 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 sensory information that we get back to nature, that we're communicating with our environments with our bodies with with each other as men and women you know that's even been you know we know about the division there as well mm -hmm. you know but um yeah so it's such an interesting like you say they they knew what to do when that time came and that's something we've all lost i think oh we're it's, definitely it's, back. It's not lost there, but, there are you know. women that won't know what to do because they don't they're not able to access that at yeah. that point in time. and that is fine too yeah yes yeah 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 everyone should be empowered to make choices based on where they are in that point in their journey and it, if you're not able to access that part of your wisdom you can't that's fine you know if nothing good comes from force yeah and yeah. if you're not ready to question the maternity system yet or step outside of it cool yeah but we are here to help fill in the gaps 
So if you want to have a systemic birth, because you're, you know, this might be brand new to you, especially if you're like late in pregnancy, you've been bombarded with information from that side. Now you don't need me freaking you out even more from the other side. That's not what I'm about. But we're yeah. certainly here to help fill in the gaps. I had a lady who came to me uh, two weeks ago. She she and her husband had a one-to-one with me and she was due to have a cesarean section. That's what she wanted. And I thought, well, I am not about to start scaring her about natural birth and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, what plan can we put in place so she has the most empowered C-section? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm about. Not telling anyone what to do. And yeah. in the end, uh, she was very worried about getting um, tainted blood. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> so um, I was going to start tainted blood. <laughs> 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 it took me a minute. Like, oh, Are you with me? She was very worried about that. Um, yeah. and at no point had her consultant given her any other options. It was blood transfusion or nothing. So to empower her, I walked her through all the options. I was like, well, you can use something called gelafusin, which is um, a synthetic um, uh, form of, it's not a blood transfusion, but it's a plasma expander. So you can use that instead. As you're having a cesarean operation, they can bring in a cell salvage machine instead of a blood transfusion. So we went through all that and she needed it. She bled. Mm -hmm. And they had it all set up for her. The doctors didn't even mention it the whole time she was pregnant. She was very scared. And then I taught her about the importance of skin to skin contact. You can still yeah. have cord clamping when you've had a C-section. And she did have a much better experience than she thought she would. So again, it's not about choose black or white, home or hospital, natural or you know, managed. No. You know, what do you want to do? You know, mm. yeah. you know, it's so refreshing, I think, for women to have gone from being told what to do from someone coming in who is a birth keeper, sits on your sofa, on your turf and goes, right, what do you want? That, yeah. that is a huge difference. Rather than being barked orders at, your rhesus is negative, you've got to have anti-D. You're overdue, you've got to be induced. You've yeah. had a C-section, you've got to have another one. No, that's not true. <laughs> It's just that narrow focus, isn't it? And you're just giving it's, – it's empowering women by giving them those mm. that information and the, helping them to make the right choice for them, isn't it? They Absolutely. need knowledge as well, don't they? That's the thing. If you're told one way and one way only, that's all you're going to know. If, you, if, if you've got – if you yeah, so if you've got yourself, which is amazing, where you go, well, actually, there is these alternatives – ah, okay, well, that, I feel a bit better about that. You know, that that's a great thing to do. It's uh, about getting yourself – down the um, the emotional scale so if you're at a 20 so it's like a a scale of 1 to 22 22 being fear panic despair one being you know empowered and feeling great you don't need to get from 22 to one you need to get from 22 down to a 20 and then to a 17 it's taking baby steps to feel empowered and living moment by moment you know it's it's about understanding that there doesn't have to be an agenda and according to anyone else it's about what you want and if if you're worried about doing the wrong thing take some time and actually think what do you want you know women are are told all the time they use horrible language they'll say if you go overdue your risk of stillbirth doubles that sounds really scary doesn't it yeah Yeah. but let's (laughs) break that down shall we then you repeat yourself Women never ask this because they don't know they can ask a double of what? Is my risk of stillbirth one in five to two in five or one in 500 to two in 500? Because there's a big bloody difference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're all like repeating that to themselves, won't we? And we know what we say to ourselves, then that we create it. And it's like, mm-hmm. wow. Isn't it? Yeah. I think asking questions is important, isn't it? I think this is where, because again, you're, in, you're sort of conditioned to trust and trust alone. You don't ask questions, do you? This is the thing. So I, you've don't, got... oh. I don't think women know the right questions to ask sometimes. So um, yeah. for those of you watching, if you go to my website, you can down, that, download a free book, uh, an ebook. It's called The Template Letters. And I've, I've written hundreds of letters for women over the years. And I'm very proud to say my letters have a 100% success rate. And what I mean by success rate is getting the system to focus their brains and actually give them respect and help them to make an informed decision. So let's say, for example, you've been told 
you have to be induced because you have a big baby. So we call this the Socratic method. You ask them questions so they actually focus their brains and it's not then yeah. up to you. Remember, you're not on trial. It's not up to you to prove your body won't fail you. It's up to them to prove it will, right? So when you take the Socratic approach, the following can happen. So I've had a lady who said, I've been told my baby's enormous, I have to be induced. So I said, right, cool. Um, well, what we'll do, we'll write them a letter to your consultant and mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say, no, don't do it. If, if they really want you to have that induction, they've got to prove it and you've got to make an informed decision. So yeah. I, asked, I asked the following questions, if I'm rem remembering correctly. First of all, can you define big, right? Um, what is big? Uh, because I've known women who have given birth at home to 11 and a half pounders with no tearing. And yeah. our, our bodies don't, we, our babies don't outgrow our bodies. Just yeah. to explain yeah. that there's a difference between a big baby and a gestational diabetes baby. They have very broad shoulders and they can, they can cause a problem sometimes. But there's another question. Do you separate your studies of big, big babies and gestational diabetes babies? The answer is no, they don't. So how on earth can you make an informed choice? What margin of error do your scans carry? Spoiler, 15%. Yeah. Um, mm. Out of the babies that have been induced in your trust, what percentage of them end up in the neonatal intensive care unit? Mm. If you're worried about a shoulder dystocia, do you not have the skills to, to fix a shoulder dystocia? And do small babies experience a shoulder dystocia? Because the worst shoulder dystocia I've seen was in a small baby. So right. you have to know the right questions to ask. And then either you give them rope to hang, so to speak, or they end up giving you far more information so you can make an informed decision. And you might yeah. end up choosing that induction if that's yeah. right for you. Or you might go, no, you're all right. Yeah. Have you... Um... In in your in your many years of, of doing this now and going through this, have you have you seen a change in um, you know when you've come across midwives, for example, that are that are very much indoctrinated in the system? Have you inspired others in that respect now as well? Oh, inspired, infested. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like a small hooligan. <laughs> I, I, I think for the most part, I'm irritating. Um, <laughs> I try not to be. I'm very much marmite in the past world. The back of the system, though, is the zzzz. <laughs> so we can do <laughs> I can I can feel the eye rolls when um, doctors do. <laughs> awesome. I, get, I get my clients to CC. So when I write them a letter, I'll get them to CC and when push comes to shove. And you can just Ooh. see them going, oh, no, this bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say that. That's not an email. You know what? I'm not here to please everyone. And if we try to please everyone, we please no one. Um, yeah. I think but I've, had, I've had a flurry of midwives um, come to when push comes to shove. When they were talking about the mandate um, a year or so ago, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them went, right, that's it, I'm done. And I, I made something called the Midwife Lifeboat Course. Um, that was to give midwives a lifeline and another chance to work in an autonomous way. Um, yeah. And every single midwife that came through that course, they all said, oh, my God, this is how I wow. want to practice. I don't want to do this anymore. Most of them left. Yeah, and amazing. now they're working with when push comes to shove. They have dropped their, um, their NMC pin, so they're not working under the governing body of the NMC. But they're also not working in clinical practice anymore. I need to make that very clear. No one at when push comes to shove works in clinical practice. No. We're not there to slice and dice or do anything medical we are specialists in physiological holistic birth but all the midwives that are working with us now sorry i'm poorly <laughs> all the midwives <laughs> working with us now um they haven't looked back they're oh. working with women and you know they'll take on a couple of clients a month um some I, in fact one of the midwives that joined the midwife lifeboat course she's now my business partner she oh, was very great. inspired by the course and she wanted to do something together. So she left the, the system. Yeah. Uh, she's got her pin. And we have now come together and we've created something called the Artemis Birth Attendant Academy. And we've written a year-long course. And you will learn everything. We've got a combined experience of 30 years. And we've yeah. done 55 modules. Wow. And 
you yeah. teach everything from homeopathy to cranial osteopathy, like an intro to it, um, to ancient birth wisdom, everything that everything we know is in that course and it's a year long and you'll learn far more about birth than you would in three years of midwifery. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, obviously, uh, humans have been around quite a while. <laughs> and I think before before technology started to take over, I mean, I was thinking before with them, um, when when the lady is is pregnant, you are after a period of time, you go and have an ultrasound, don't you? And, and this kind of thing. And there's something there's something in the back of my mind going are we starting a trauma situation really early here? Because there's frequency there. I'm a bit, I don't know. Am I wrong? I might, I might be wrong. I don't know. My so, gut feeling is ultrasound ultimately isn't safe. Right. Interesting. I just, that, we, I, don't I, have, yeah. we don't have any long-term safety data. None. Ah, um, okay. Now I'm not here to say don't have an ultrasound because yeah. Sometimes ultrasounds can be very yeah. helpful to pick up um, various problems, um, congenital heart defects, and there, therefore we can prepare for when the baby's born to know what to do. But yeah. I don't think every woman should be forced into having one. I've had women that have called me because they've declined scans and they've been referred to social services because they've declined yeah. scans. And um, it's revolting. If you're enjoying everything that we're doing here at Drake, Michigan, Please subscribe, ring my bell, and let's enjoy this journey together. Like, so why, why do we have to do that? And I know from experience, when that probe is put on your abdomen, baby moves away from it. It's high yeah. frequency. It's, it, it heats your cells up. I don't know what it's doing to the baby. Interesting. Have, there was even a book I read about, do you remember back in the day, there was this scare of um, the Zika virus? Yes. Or, to be born with microcephaly yes um, well one of my clients had a baby with microcephaly and i i was doing a lot of research um and i came across a book of a guy that said the zika conspiracy and he was saying it was nothing to do with mosquitoes he he thinks it was to do with high frequency ultrasounds that was causing the microcephaly oh wow a lot a lot of viruses like that like the spanish flu you know there's a book called the um something rainbow um it was just all about frequency and how the spanish flu was um kind of they injected people with something around that around that time which killed millions but it also was at the advent of um radio frequencies it was, so that's similar right, yeah. to kind of yeah. what you know and it, it's a bit of a conspiracy mm -hmm. they made me like have the same how they're injecting and and the fact and then that. there's there's the there's, 5g there's certain, well that's it there's certain bit, frequencies bit being introduced to because everything to is our, frequency yeah, yeah. isn't it but i think mm -hmm. that the key is again for, for women isn't it like you were saying with your templates and 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 like you know the the, the note, I suppose it's like notices in legal terms. It's interesting. And obviously we'll put all your details underneath Definitely. so people can contact you um, and access these things because it's, it's, it's just empowering. Again, it's, it's asking the right questions. It's the same with the legal thing. We ask questions. Um, it's asking as king, you know, you, you, you keep in that higher status because knowledge truly is power. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when the women, are, you know, you know, it's not for you, as you say, to tell them how to do it, what to do. But so like say, you know, an, an hour one-to-one -one with yourself, just, as it would be with me in le the legal sense you know people come off um those calls it's not so much that you've you, you, you know you know i always say i'm not here to tell you what to do it's for you to decide what you want to do i can just act and aid and assist and and get you know you know take and, and just you can see that fear come off people mm -hmm. and again it just goes back to that 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 fear and giving people that they can see that they've got options that there's a different way than just the one way that they're yeah. being told by, yes. by the system it's very, it's very hard sometimes not create more fear from the other side. Um, very hard. It's very different with you because it's a very physical thing, isn't it, as well? Yeah. It's not just a piece of paper, really, or a, a PCN or a penalty charge and notice. It's much, it's much more, yeah, of, of it's, the... It's, it's very fear. emotionally um, challenging sometimes. Yes, I, yes. I, I get some very, very sad cases, like hmm. last week, no, week before I burnt out, because I had case after case, this is probably why I'm ill, I had case after yeah. case of women traumatised and they, they found me kind of too late and mm. they were sabotaged. They were sabotaged by the system and they had no idea. And I got off the phone several times and cried. And I thought, why is, why is this happening? Why is mm. this still happening? But how, 
how on earth can you make informed choices if you don't have information? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Information. Yes. Yeah. And um, if, if the system are telling you a procedure is 100% safe, they're either lying or misinformed because here's the truth. There's no such thing as a drug that does not have side effects. Mm -hmm. And if they're telling you it's 100% safe, no, it's not. I can't tell you the opposite is 100% safe. But I think we need to move away from the idea that we need a black and white option. That is not what I believe the, the growth of human consciousness is about. It's about yeah. looking at things in a balanced way, asking yourself questions, asking the system questions, and then making the right decision for you. I knew that when I gave birth at home, there was risk. But for me, there was greater risk of going to hospital. I made a, an informed decision, yeah. and I thought, I don't want anyone in my birth space that's fearful. I don't want women gathered around me wearing fucking hazmat suits. And yeah. I, I, I just, ugh, no, I know what yeah. I want. So yeah. I knew there was risk, but there's risk with everything. There is. You walk out your front door, you know, you could class that as a risk, but certainly with giving birth, you know, things go up. But like you say, it's, it's, it's information, it's an informed, you know, being able to just, that that's just empowering to, to have all that information and have somebody kind of, you know, you know, get it across to you in a clear and concise manner, you know, in, in but, any situation. But we're all unique, aren't we, Nikita, as well? So every, I presume every birth in that respect is unique. Every mm -hmm. female that's giving birth is unique. Don't don't think for a second that birth will follow a pattern because it won't. <laughs> no. There's no such thing as a textbook birth. You know, we're told, oh, when the contractions are two minutes apart, no pay any attention to that. I've seen a 10-hour second stage of labour. Like a woman, a woman went, she was about to push and she went, no, I need a rest. And I went, all right. And mm -hmm. then she went to sleep for a few hours and woke up and then the contraction started again. Right. I'll tell you an amazing story. And this is what we are capable of, ladies. Now, this woman in question was not a particularly spiritual woman. She wasn't on a woo-woo hippie path. And this was years and years ago. A colleague of mine who's an amazing independent midwife. She's originally from New Zealand and she was due to attend this lady's birth. Um, the lady's waters broke. And unfortunately, my friend got a call saying that her mother had passed away and she needed to go to New Zealand. So she rang her client and she said, I have to go to New Zealand. I'll send someone else to your birth because your waters are broken. And this woman went, no, I'll wait. It's fine, I'll wait. And she went, but I'm going to be gone for like two weeks. And she went, no, it's fine, I'll wait. And her waters <laughs> are broken. If you're in the system now, you've got 12 hours. Wow. They will not let you go <laughs> over. A little risk of infection, but we'll, I can't, I'm not going to get into that today. But So yeah. my, my friend went to New Zealand. She was gone for 17 days. Yeah. She came home and she called this lady to see what she'd had. And she went, no, I told you I'd wait. <laughs> no way. And then she said, had you, have you slept? And she says, I haven't slept yet. She went, well, go and sleep and then I'll have the baby when you wake up. And that's exactly what she did. Whoa, wow. That's so cool. That's that power, like, we were talk, like you were saying. And we that's were talking so cool. about it this morning. You know, the cosmic mind is the original thought. It's thought. Yeah, the, the, the kingdom, that, that power, that's that woman's beautiful. intent and mind. And, and you know, we, we know how thought kind of affects matter in mm. that way. And what an amazing example of that. <laughs> that's no bigger one than that. I was like, bloody hell, I, I can hardly wait around in a queue. I mean, <laughs> I was like, that's she wanted awesome. there. She wanted her there. And that's what she was going to get. I've got another example of it. Last March, I attended a wonderful home birth. Um, this lady was a head teacher at school. Very, very logical. Very, very, I need structure and this has to happen. She went mm -hmm. on maternity leave very late. And she goes, Nikita, I'm finishing school on the Friday, so I, will have, I won't have the baby before then. I'm going to have the baby on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what she did. <laughs> she, she was amazing. She called me early hours Sunday morning. And she goes, my waters are broken and I'm having regular contractions. Me not listening to her gut, I'm thinking, first time, baby, go back to bed. You've got ages yet. So I told her, go back to bed. She called me an hour later, and I could hear in her voice. I was like, oh, shit. So I got in the car, and um, her husband called me when I was nearly there, and, she, and he said to me, oh, she needs a poo. I was like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she so, but I got there, and um, she was, like, leaning over the birth pool, and I said, oh, let me have a look. And I looked and I could see the head was right there. And I said, look, if you want a water birth, I suggest you get in the pool. And uh, she got in and the baby was born with 10, 10 minutes of my arrival. And wow. this was a first time mum. And 
first time, again, this is why birth never follows a pattern. You, you yeah. would expect that a first time birth would be between eight and 12 hours in like established labor. But this baby shot out. And you know, I learn all the time. I don't know everything. Every yeah. birth I attend, I learn something new and it's very humbling. I'm like, oh my God, this, this woman had in her head, I'm going to have this baby on Sunday. That's my plan. And that's exactly what she did. And I was like, power to you, woman. Yes. She Must be a star lead. Let me out. Let me out of here. I've got, I've got work to do. It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. and you may be able to enlighten me, actually, because I've been sat here thinking, because I love etymology and I, I love words. And um, doula, what does the word doula actually mean? It means woman servant in Greek. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I was just sat here thinking doula must obviously have some kind of deeper meaning. Woman mm. servant. Mm. Servant, yeah, woman yeah. Serve. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So and, and that's such an interesting thing, isn't it? Do you find, Nikita, you know, obviously there's a big awakened community at the moment shall we call it but um you know like talking about this lady who was um a, just you know a head teacher you know you must see such a, a range of different women do you find that you know it really is like really spread across the board so and that's what kind of I suppose being awakened or not is isn't it it's such it's like a, it's like a Persian rug it's such a such a tapestry of, of different people as in the, the tapestry of all kinds of different styles of birth whether the baby's coming quickly or not and um, what, what's kind of your experience out there in the in, 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 in the in the doula dom <laughs> of, of different kind of I, I don't want to call them clients women <laughs> clients I'm just in legal we've had all sorts we, all from all work, walks of life I've attended um so I do births zoom births so people zoom. who can't find um you know birth keepers in their area I've done them from oh. ladies in Dubai for Colombia Canada America who need the support they don't have anyone physically there so I'll go on, on Zoom for them we get we've had celebrities come to oh. us their births um we've had people in poverty people who have got a lot of money we've had all sorts but i tell you one very common de denominator in this all mm -hmm. every single awake for a la lack of a better word person that comes through the when push comes to shove service they're awake but they're all empaths and mm -hmm. what i can see empaths have had unsafe or at the very least unpredictable parents so they can spot something off a mile away yeah mm, and it all seems they have this trauma from mm. something in their childhood and they can recognize danger like that yeah yeah that's the common denominator i see we were talking about that very again this morning it's just so interesting how everything well everything's connected isn't it everything's interconnected but mm. the trauma opens the pineal gland that that and, and perhaps that deeper that deeper intuition uh, that we were talking about that sensory that you know just just like you say just to be able to spot it you know extremely mm. quickly that's why we've kind of worked out the the game in, in if it wants of a better phrase mm. uh, far 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 quicker than maybe you know Joe, Joe Normie, maybe. Well, yeah, because you, that with, with, that, without that trauma, you feel safe in the system, won't you? Yeah, but yeah. You, you've not, yeah, you've not. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's amazing how many people we speak to on the on the podcast through it where trauma is the catalyst for a spiritual awakening of some description. And uh, I, I was saying to Car Carly before, I heard something where a, the central nervous system is your filter. And 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 it, with trauma, that central nervous system is damaged, and therefore your filter is 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 less strong. If that makes what makes yeah, sense, yeah. so therefore you are connecting more to source. You are breaking down that, um, which I think is an interesting. It wouldn't surprise me because trauma was certainly a catalyst yeah. for my fight or flight, isn't it? You know, yeah, you, yeah, you've, you've, yeah, like yeah. I said, to do the nervous system, the endocrine system, things like that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's interesting. It's sorry, interesting, sorry, yeah. Nikita, you were going to say something. <laughs> No, if, if you think of like um uh like a heart monitor and you know the little things that go up and you can see them. Yeah. like casualty, he's tachycardic, he's tachycardic. <laughs> <laughs> People with trauma and use the, the heart monitor as a metaphor. So if you've got someone that's just buzzing through life, no trauma, you can just see the tiny little variables, right? It takes quite a long time for get to point from point A to point B. But if you've got someone who's got trauma and you use the heart monitor that they've got very high up and down waves, it takes a much quicker time to get from A to B. Interesting. It's yeah. To come down, it's, it's a very good metaphor to understand the spiritual journey that we're on. 
Yeah, I like that. Like a roller coaster, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Charm is a roller coaster. Just gotta ride it. <laughs> yeah, we can get Ron and Keaton to do a do-over on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I get, I get spirits communicates to me through song. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's just so interesting, isn't it? And um, I think you, you're going to be at the um, the Shine seminars, aren't you? Um, in yeah, I'm speaking on Friday, Friday morning. And then I'll oh, miss I'm you. I'm not there till the afternoon. Are you not? Well, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm really busy that weekend. So I'm speaking at the Shine Seminars Friday morning. I think it's about 9.30. And then I've got to go all the way to the other side of the country because on Saturday I'm speaking at Jam for Freedom. Oh, yeah, Jam for Freedom's there on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I'm, I'm speaking Sunday morning. So we'll we'll be like, shits in the, shits in the night. Shits in the night. <laughs> <laughs> shits in the night. That little thing you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, no. And it's such a powerful message, isn't it? And there's, you know, there's so much, you know, there's so many amazing people doing such amazing stuff to bring. It's like healing these ancestral wounds. I always say it's almost like our ancestors are screaming at us from mm. uh, beyond the veil um, and going like, you know, remember, you know, remember who you are, remember mm. who you are, you know. And when we're, we're all starting to know ourselves, we're all starting to um, get our power back, you know, like we were saying, instead of giving it over to the people in the white courts, to giving it over to, you know, just because you've got a clipboard and a, and a badge and a uniform doesn't mean that you're correct, I'm afraid. And they're all given certificates and awards and they all, you know, like you said, you briefly went back to kind of get the piece of paper and the letters behind your name. But we're, we're all starting to deprogram from that and realising that, you know, again, an award is something you give award you know we don't need the pieces of paper it's, it's starting to trust our own power and who we are and, and and helping each other and aiding each other in love we all have our different skill sets and that puts the the unity and community as i say mm. absolutely and you know what we're all here for the same reason we're here to serve the world with love how we do that is up to you yeah. to listen to your calling just so happens mine appears to be birth but yeah. just remember this right if when fear takes over, you wouldn't open a door to a dark room and see the dark and start kicking and screaming and punching the dark. You would turn the light on, right? Now, just yeah. remember, darkness is not a thing. It's the absence of a thing, which is light. So when you are faced with that fear, just shine your light. Yeah, and, yeah. and hopefully unity well, I mean, that's what yoga means. Yoga means unity. It's my understanding mind, body, and soul mm -hmm. and how it works together. Yeah. Just briefly, this is so important for pregnancy, all right? There are yeah. only three things that will ever make you ill, including pregnancy and as an adult, and whatever, pediatrics, only three things that will make you ill. Toxicity, deprivation, and trauma. That's yeah. it, right? On the level of toxicity, deprivation, and trauma, that can occur on three levels, mind, body, and soul. So if you yeah. look to the body and there's no toxicity in your body, you're not depriving mm -hmm. your body of anything, you haven't had a physical trauma, what about here? Because yeah. trauma on emotional and spiritual and a body level will cause dis-ease. Yes. yes. So that's why, Carly, what you were saying about our ancestors are like screaming out. We do have a choice. We can cut that, you know. We can cut that handmaiden, bloody legacy, that toxic legacy, that we have to be good girls and we have to do what we're told. We're taught right from childhood that we're responsible for other people's feelings. That's not true. And it happens when, just, just watch, next time you see this and being an impartial observer, kid having tantrum, mum, don't do that, it makes me feel like this. Child learns yeah. responsible for other people's feelings. No. They're not. And it's never the child's behaviour that's a problem. It's our response to the behaviour. Same yeah. as any adult interaction. Yeah, We're not yeah. responsible for them. It's how we respond. Okay? Yeah. We get a choice. We can cut the handmaiden legacy. We can cut that. And yeah. we have to do work on ourselves every day. You don't go to the gym for a month and think, right, I'm buff, I'm done. That's it. <laughs> no. Was that, I, I, I did that though. I must admit, I, and, and I've not been back. <laughs> to react aren't we it's really you know I, I watched this really cool video it's a guy called paul hederman and he talks about you know the holographic nature and all this kind of thing but what he says that he says the matrix stays the same it's how we react 
to mm. it is, is is taking responsibility for ourselves and the you know the system or the state or whatever you want to call it doesn't want us to take responsibility for ourselves it, it wants to be that nanny it wants yeah. you know it wants to be that pied piper that puppet master of things you know so it is about taking personal responsibility for our emotions you know and, that, that, and, and that's why what you're doing is so beautiful because you are empowering people and 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 giving them confidence allowing them to be which is which is wonderful you know so we're part of the change of whatever's going on in the in the world right now in terms of an awakening or a shift or whatever's happening you're playing a massive part right now and it's 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 what you know we all have i think we're all playing cogs we're all cogs in this at the moment and we're all playing our little parts but I just feel that you've got a big cog there that's just, just so empowering and, you know, kudos to you, Nikita. Thank you. I'm trying my very best. No, I think I think there are people that think I'm doing wrong, but, you know, we can't please everyone. Well, you're doing it. You know, you're not just trying. It's like Yoda says, isn't it? Do or do not do. There is no trying. <laughs> you are, you are right. <laughs> Always the Star Wars references in the Matrix me. I'm all right. No. <laughs> Um, but yeah you know you, you're out there you, you've done it you're not just doing it you've done, you've done it. it and you'll yeah, continue yeah. to do you know and and, and evolve and we'll uh, enjoy being I on. love what you just said because that's exactly the words I say to the mums yeah. when they tell me they can't do it anymore I can't do this you're already <laughs> doing it <laughs> you've <Yeah>. done it <laughs> nearly <laughs> but yes yeah no awesome yeah, Nikita awesome. can I ask you something though because obviously you're going to have pushed back from circles there's no doubt about that um, because when you when you're fighting a a, a system that's that's put in place, you're gonna have indoctrination or people that are gonna literally you, you're gonna get hate, aren't you? I can imagine, and you've got to you've just got to put love out there, kind of thing. Um, but you must have had to because you're a very intelligent woman, obviously, and you must have learned an awful lot of the science behind pregnancy because you're going to have to counteract doctors and various other physicians or whatever that must be a, a challenge or do you welcome that <laughs> business i don't i don't need to prove anything i mean no. if i'm asked i will yeah i do know my stuff i'm very good at my job if yeah. i'm asked i'll talk but i'm not going about going about the place shoving it down people's throats i'm not doing that it's, do you know what? There, there was an inter I keep talking about this because it was so profound on an energetic level for me. I watched an interview. There was a woman who was 105 years old and the mm -hmm. interviewer said to her, what is the key to longevity? And she said, minding my own business. And I thought, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> amazing. You're not, you're not going to change it to when uh, when push comes, we're shoving it down your face. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that's the thing as well. You know, people, um, when they're ready, you know, they'll they'll resonate and energetically in that kind of quantum entanglement, they will find you. You know, if, they, if you know, people are watching this and resonate with it, yes, they will find you. Definitely. And it is, it's, it, it, we don't need to push. We just, I always say, you know, we don't just talk the talk but walk the walk you know hopefully we all lead by example with 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 purity of heart and intention and and the rest will just happen because that's that that is divine you know absolutely i'm not interested in you know going to protests or anything like that or you it's know not, let's try and change the system no i've made a new one exactly I'm, boom I'm not, and if people don't like what i do Bog off. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, There's things people yeah. are so bothered, aren't they? Just, just look over there. there. So We're not you. you can't please everyone. I, yeah. I was really shocked when I got my first troll. I was really shocked. And I thought, oh, my <laughs> God, all I want to do is help people. But you know what? Oh, yeah. Not everyone's going to see the world the same way you do. And um, I'm imagining they sit in their mum's basement covered in Cheeto dust anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> better to do you know and it's uh we, we another conversation we, we have lots of conversations don't we Anne? but um it's certainly the man in the arena quote by you know teddy mm. roosevelt you know we know what presidents are but i just love the quote and it and it's easy to stand on the sidelines whilst you know the you know you are covered in in literal blood and dust and sweat you know um and you are the woman in the arena you know mm -hmm. it's it's easy to get behind a computer and go i think she's doing that wrong or you should have done it that way and why are you doing that well are you doing it oh no well shut up then yeah, um and yeah. we know that a lot of these people are almost paid to do things they're paid trolls and, and then like i said they're covered in cheeto dust with nothing else better to do so 
it, it, you do have to develop develop a little bit of a thick skin. And I know I have, and it can be difficult because, you know, you, you're out there trying to do your best and help. Do I always get it right? Do you do? No, but we're out there and we are mad. We are, we are in the arena. Mm. And that's the important thing. And it's actually helpful, you know. I mm. think when you ask the universe, help me with, I don't know, anger or help me with anxiety, the first thing that will start banging at your door is anger and anxiety because... <laughs> Like, yeah, sure. You know what? You can be really enlightened when everyone around you is behaving exactly as you want. But it's the yeah. challenges, it's the tests. When yeah. right, you, you think you can do this, what about this? What about this? It's called leveling up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the time, I'm like, this feels horrible. <laughs> this feels yucky. But yeah. sit with it. Don't resist. And anyone out there who is trying to do something different, who is trying to do something against the mainstream, just do it. Don't think about it. Just have your vision and make it happen. Yes, you're going to get tests along the way. Yes, you're going to get weird little trolls and <laughs> obsessed people. I said, you must love me so much. He's <laughs> <laughs> thinking about me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can you imagine what impact you have on the kitchen? You're me on the fridge with darts. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure there's a few voodoo dolls of me lying around. <laughs> is it? A, you know, they want to kind of use that energy, you know, which is quite funny, isn't it? You've got to laugh. I mean, it, it was there were some things I was watching recently in relation to kind of that kind of trolling thing, and I, I'm so glad I don't respond, you know, because sometimes it's tempting, isn't it? Because we're all human. Mm -hmm. But then I just kind of think it's exactly what you said, Nikita, earlier. You know, it's, it's it, words, you know, it's not what we say, it's what we do. And I always say to people, check the energy of where that comes from. Forget what it is that they're saying. Mm -hmm. Check my energy, check theirs. That gives you all the answers that you need to know hopefully and then I hopefully I just gracefully pop off <laughs> and float off into the distance that's how I think it looks in my head anyway <laughs> probably not but bless block the leak yeah yeah exactly that's as much energy as you need. Uh, but sometimes you know if it gives you an uncomfortable feeling that's good you, you can check yourself you know you, you either reevaluate your values and you go right yep they're cemented I do believe that or you think oh I'm not quite sure because it always holds a mirror up yeah yeah mm. exactly yeah. when it holds the mirror up you get a challenge you're like okay do i need to look into this more no nope. yeah i really feel that or do you know what yeah i might i might need to do a bit more research here yeah we, no, that's, we. that's 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 yeah, i do that when, when. if someone calls me something or a name or says i'm this or that i go am i <laughs> i'll sit there oh, and yeah. go, no <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks just checking <laughs> it's horrible though isn't it isn't that amazing what fear can do when yeah. you know that all you do is try and help and you serve the world with love and then you get that but you know it, you can let it hold you back or you can go no i'm transcending this i'm not interested you actually come you you have it for a minute you know because it's energy someone's just gone Bleh, at you and then you go oh and then i go because I always say, like, I'm like a whack-a-mole. I said that to Eli, you know, when he did those 45-minute interviews. I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I might go down for a second, but, you know, <laughs> a couple of weeks, months later, I just pop back up but in a different boing, 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 boing. <laughs> you keep whacking me down. It just feeds me, you know. I'm like a, I'm like the Duracell bunny. It's like, keep giving me the <laughs> <laughs> downtime, otherwise it can be overwhelming. You know, yeah. not, not talking on a troll level, on an energetic level, because sometimes yeah. you can get very, very overwhelmed by the collective energy of what's going on in the world, because that's all it is, right? We can't be surprised we've had a shit show the last few years because the collective consciousness has been that of fear. So yeah. I mean, I'm sure you all know the um, the the was it in Washington? They did a study of forty thousand people meditating at once, and crime rate dropped. Yeah. yeah. So it's about we all have to shine our light and shine our light hard, really, really hard to do sometimes. Yeah. When everything yeah. around you is negative and fearful, but try not to get sucked into that. Just yeah. rise above it. Absolutely, absolutely. Can I can I take you back just a little bit to back to birth and just for just for a, a short period because I'm over this conversation, but I've just got this in my mind of the 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 the, 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 the mother to be lying on her back. She's had an epidural. There's a there's an issue. She's in hospital. There's an issue, and then forceps are introduced. And and again, I'm just I'm just feeling this trauma. Just you know, the the baby. There's there's serious issues that could happen with that procedure alone, isn't there? You know, that's not natural. 
a baby was killed last week with poor sex. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah. And then they take the baby away, Lucky. don't they? We know they do the heel prick test because they want the... All the... of that. The fact that the baby... Yeah. Is the baby smacked yeah. or whatever they do, they, they create that, tra again, that trauma from... Um, cerebral palsy is usually caused by something like that. Wow. So yeah. oxygen deprivation in labour and then forceps delivery. Yeah, yeah. There's so mm. much. So well, much trauma. Hey, is... here's the interesting thing. In the Amish community, there is yeah. no autism. Yeah, because they don't. I know. Them. I saw. I saw the headline Keep yesterday. Them. Yeah, like no autism, no cancer, no. My my colleague, my very a very close friend of mine. She works. She serves the Amish community. And um, hey, this might sound controversial to you, but I don't believe things cause autism. I believe they cause something that looks like autism. Right. Um, and it's post. Uh, encephalitis so i think in the amish community look at what they're eating again toxicity deprivation and trauma yeah what toxic what toxins are in their food none what are they depriving themselves of nothing they're not on social media all the time you know frying their brains <laughs> and getting the dopamine rush they don't have and i said to my friend are you sure they they don't have it or it, they're not diagnosed with it and she said they don't have it wow. yeah and that is I'm, i don't know that for sure i, I'm, I don't i don't work with the amish community no but i believe but yeah, very interesting yeah no i do i've, I've read quite a well, that's, that, that's an ad, that's an advert isn't it for going back to nature really and, yeah. and living a more simple existence we're, we're in such a fast environment now so much stress so much pressure oh wow you know then you're eating shit food because you you, you, you're just on the go all the time. You've no, it's just. And then what women are told to take during pregnancy, it, it, oh my God, it makes me want to peel the skin off my face. So they're told you've got to take um, these vitamins. I won't say the manufacturer, but a very popular yeah. um, pregnancy vitamin. Yeah. Um, and they don't realise that in these packages, in these, in these pills, they are full of fillers and binders. Mm. And what happens is when you take, so you take these vitamins because you you're, you need more vitamin C, you need more zinc, zinc, whatever it is. So you take it. But the problem is, what you don't realise, when you've got fillers and binders in this, it penetrates the mitochondria of your cell and it rips out all your zinc. Yeah. And you need zinc to absorb vitamins. So yeah. what essentially you're doing is giving your, yourself very expensive wee. That's yeah. it. It doesn't do anything. Yes, yeah, pass right. And they through. tell you take folic acid. Now, the reason they tell you to take folic acid is because they want to prevent something called spina bifida, mm -hmm. and folic acid helps the development of your midline of your body. Now, what we've seen over the years, it seems to be over developing the midline, and all these babies are being born with tongue ties, and they can't breastfeed. That says like a membrane that goes from your tongue to the bottom of your mouth. You can have a posterior tongue tie. I actually have one right at the back. And you can have a membrane that's even from there, from the tip of your tongue. So yeah. these babies can't latch properly and they have to have this membrane cut. Right. But folic acid can, it does seem, it appears to be causing overdevelopment of the midline. Now, what I would suggest is do your research. You might mm -hmm. find there's no link to tongue tie. Or you might see there's evidence of that. But folate. Have folate. You can get that in food. You know, and what is your diet looking like? Because if yeah. you're eating, um, you know, like I always say to women on the who are pregnant, go on the brewer's diet straight away. So let me briefly explain why nutrition is so important. So you might hear a lot about women who have had these awful, very disastrous pregnancies with something called placental abruption. Yeah. You may have heard of someone that's had one and it's awful and it is a true emergency. So what that means is the placenta has separated from the uterine wall before birth and women bleed and bleed and bleed. It's very, very dangerous. So just to explain um, how to prevent that from happening. And that's another thing. You go into the system, you say, why did that happen? And they go, we don't know. Why don't they know? Yeah, why don't they know? <laughs> they don't know anything. Not, well, um, it's not bizarre. Bizarre. Treat why it happens or why it usually happens i don't want to say that in a full full term so you've got the uterine wall and the placenta is attached to it 
behind the placenta, you've got a pool of blood. And the pool of blood is responsible for keeping that placenta nourished and therefore um, nourishing your baby. In order for the pool of blood to be sufficient, we have to expand our blood volume by up to 60% during pregnancy. In order to do that, our liver has to perform 500 metabolic functions. In order for our liver to do that, we need 120 grams of protein a day. If we don't have 120 grams of protein a day, you will see various ailments and at a very serious level, things like placental abruption, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes. I had a, a very good friend of mine who I've known since I was two years old, who has forever just thought of me as a weird hippie. With her second baby, she decided to do things differently because she had a traumatic first birth. When she was about 30 weeks pregnant, she called me, she said she'd fainted. I went round and I discovered she'd got horrific gestational diabetes. I was like, what the hell are you eating? Uh, you eat, she's like, oh, shit, cakes. I'm like, oh, well, there you go. Mm. I said, Look, we're going to put you on the brewer's diet. And she said, oh, no, I don't want to go on metformin or all these horrible drugs. I was like, you don't need to. You just need to change your diet right now. It will get rid of it. Mm. She was very skeptical, uh, skeptical. Ten days later, gone. No sign of gestational diabetes, completely gone because she'd been wow. following the brewer's diet. Literally gone. Wow. And she couldn't believe it. And long story short, I'm, I'll tell you what, this was probably the the best birth I've ever attended because I've known her since I was two years old. She <laughs> called me at 9.30 at night. I got there at quarter to 10. The baby was born at 10.55 and I caught him yeah. in my arms, my best friend of, of 34 years. It was so magic. Wow. And then, and then he had meconium, so she sent me a card saying, Dear Auntie Kitty, I'm sorry I pooed on you. <laughs> 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 the, point, the point of the story is nutrition is everything. Yeah, you yeah, never taught any of it. You go to a three-minute midwife appointment mm -hmm. and they don't address what you're eating or what you're not eating. And then they yeah. start telling you to take all these things. They don't understand what's in them. This is why you should challenge everything. You know, when I got appointments for various medical interventions, I asked questions. I was like, can you give me information about this, that, and the other? The doctor calls me. Don't know the answer to any of these questions. I can see you've made an informed decision. I'll leave you alone. Cool. But women yeah. don't know the right questions to ask. If you don't know, just get in touch with me. I can give you a one-to-one, -one, a, a consultation, an hour of my time. And yeah. you can ask me whatever you like. I don't. I might not have the answer to every single question, but I will help you find your way. Yes. It's yeah. so yeah. important to feel empowered, ladies. And seriously, peace on earth begins at birth. I can't stress that enough. I love if that. If women don't acquiesce <laughs> to this shit during pregnancy, Think what we're capable of. And I tell you what, when you view an empowered and ecstatic birth, it is healing for anyone present. I mm. bet it is, yeah. When you yeah. see that woman catch her own baby wow. and hold them up like bloody Simba from The Lion King, like, <laughs> I yeah. see it. That is a woman you can't mess with. Yes. Yeah, Which yeah. That's it, isn't it? Her own mm. power. And look how it works. Empowered birth oxytocin endorphins that's love look at the start of birth the baby is made in love and born in love then the woman feels empowered much stronger relationship with her partner much stronger relationship with other children then she can start pouring from a full cup and if you've got enough love for yourself you can pour over for your kids if that's you've got more than that you can start helping your community and so on and so forth the difference between a traumatic birth and an empowered birth will change the world. And if we build this tribe of strong women who are wise and understand these ancient techniques that can help empower women, it will change the world. Peace on earth does begin at birth. And I really believe that if women know these alternatives and they don't have to acquiesce to the stuff they, they don't deep down feel is right, the sky's the limit, ladies. The sky's the limit. It's so beautiful what you're doing, Nikita, and, and 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 at a time where women are seriously under attack. I mean, obviously, both male and female are under attack, really. And, and birthing people, the birthing them. people, yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently, you can't yeah. have vaginas now. It's it's uh, oh. some some bonus. bonus hole. Hole. What the fuck? <laughs> bonus hole. What the fuck? I've been under attack for being transphobic. Sorry, I've been under attack for being transphobic. Oh, wow. It's just an easy wow. one, isn't it? Well, we know yeah. what the system wow. does. Yeah. It's just complete pure inversion, you know. It is. Um, 
Uh, a woman is a woman and a man is a man. I hate to break it to everybody, but we know this. Ooh, you have to ask Keir Starmer. <laughs> he might be unsure. And there's, a, there's an attack on the feminine, you know, because the because the women are rising. Because, you know, yes. even, you know, in, in, in the Vedas and, you know, the, the old texts, the, the age of the yuga... Um, is the age, age of the end of the age of destruction? It's the end of the age of man, which is why they have two lions on all government buildings. It's male, male. Was the females been removed from the Trinity? And the Trinity, you know, again, you know, it's it's, it's in every cultural um, narrative of, of of creation. You know, you can't have creation without woman. I'm afraid, you know, woman. You know, <laughs> this, that that's it. If you die, and you're a bag of bones. There's a man and there's a woman. The end. The end the end and we've been removed but there's this this chaining of the unicorn and we were i think we touched on it last time it's that you know it's it's, it's it's on the symbols the unicorn's been chained because man's feared it but now the, it is it's the time of the unchained unicorn it's this it's the end of the that age of destruction and the end at uh, the beginning of the age of woman so we will kind of lead energetically as i say and then we will we will we will, we will await the return of the king really um it's coming it's coming mm -hmm. <laughs> because it women have had to do, you know, feminism just sold us all out, you know, and that's just another nonsense that was funded by the Rockefellers. So that, and they've been injecting, you know, men with female hormones and men, you know, male with. I said your water as well is also what's going water. on. Right? So, you know, this attack on man and, you know, the, that unity, because, you know, when men and women come together. We that, have divine feminine and divine masculine. And mm -hmm. There's yeah. certainly a spectrum on that because I know lots of women who are definitely got a masculine energy, but underneath that masculine energy is the divine feminine. And yeah. I think we all need to come together oh, and stop yeah. trying to separate things. This divide and conquer shit is boring. Well, it's holy, Absolutely. isn't it? Like I said, we all have those those inners. You know, we're in that polarity. So we have male and female in us. And when the male integrates the feminine, which has is well, hasn't kind of occurred. Not not all of them. That is what being holy is. It's becoming whole in mm -hmm. in self, and then that reflects out. You know, and they can't. They can't. You you do of course know that the amount of viewers that have just seen you go like that is going to start telling everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we see that, don't we? <laughs> well, I'm dead aware of it. Do you know, somebody says nobody does those hand gestures by accident. Was it that woman on that plane? And I have no idea. Oh, yeah, she did, the, the and she did something like this. But I sometimes, I'll do that. I will talk like that. Mm -hmm. And I do this if I feel like I'm channeling. I do this and I, and I push down. I, I, and I saw Andrew Tate do that. Is it like a mudra almost, isn't it? That's, that, that's someone who's thinking about their, their thought response. It's like yeah. a... I do that, yeah, yeah, and I'll I'll do it like that, and I noticed, yeah, it's like an interview thing. Again, like that's if I'm focusing, it's, it's all energy. it's all divide and conquer that though. Anyway, it's an infiltration of the movement. <laughs> oh, I've had it all, me. I do it on purpose now, don't we? We have oh, like yeah, standing talk about, about it. it. <laughs> what I really feel for people who are saying, like you know, people like I don't know Russell Brand. Oh, he's you know he's this that and the other. He's controlled opposition. Yeah, maybe. Do you know what? My your own business. I got told <laughs> I was Illuminati because I wear this. This, oh yeah, it's, it's an Indian um tradition. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I got, got told that I was Illuminati, and then I had a lot of um Americans who saw me on I won't say the name of some big American show. Yeah. They said my name was made up. I got called <laughs> a packy. Wow. And wow. then wow. I had all this stuff like she's the devil. She's. I'm like, where are you getting this from? Because I'm wearing this. Yeah, I've had it all as well. Wow. Take it as a badge of honour, as uh, we say, because I've, I've literally, this is not a joke, somebody put a picture of Beelzebub up and then a picture of me next to Beelzebub and went, see? <laughs> and I was just like, wow. Okay. You know, that reminds me of, I was listening to the Ricky Gervais show because it's timeless and it's absolutely hilarious. And Carl <laughs> Pilkington was saying, um, oh, do, do you remember that, um, that painting everyone had and all the houses burnt down? And Ricky was like, what? He went, no, it's because everyone had a painting like that at the time in the 1980s. It's like saying, we're linking it to sinks. Anyone with a sink in their house, their, their bloody house burnt down. That's how I see it. Like, what mm -hmm. you're taking something you've just seen in a video and running with it. It's mental. This is why yeah, everyone mind their own business. It's crazy. Yeah. People are so paranoid, though, aren't they? That's the problem in this, in this yeah. situation. Yeah. yeah, and you must be doing something right because if they come to bring you down, well, dis I, discredits I always. I was heading the attack, the Charlie Massive Witches community last <laughs> week, apparently, and I was a Satanist and this and the other. So you know, brilliant. Yeah. When do we go? Sounds like a right party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy. It's absolutely I think it's crazy. But you know what? <laughs> 
people have just got to look at themselves and and look after themselves yeah. and and we're all we're all just trying to navigate our way through this mad madness aren't we you know it's you can see why it happens can't you because I think when this all started, I think people started to find their own tribes on things like Telegram yeah. and stuff like that. But but they're doing the same thing. It's fear, 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 but just from another end. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it's hilarious. hundred percent, hundred percent. Before before we close off, Nikita, I want to say I, I I just love you. I think you're incredible. I thank you for coming on the show. Um, what's your what's your plans? What's what's Nikita doing in from now to you know five more years, have you got a, have you got a, a goal path that you want to you more ambition or? I do. It... I do. Um, yeah. I want there to be uh, when push comes to shove, birth centres available in as many countries as possible, um, and I want to raise. So I'll, I need to explain this. Um, we have something called the Beverly Beach Project. So Beverly Beach was my mentor, and she died in February. And she left me with her book. Um, I'll show you. <clears throat> she has a book called Am I Allowed? Um, everyone should have this if you're pregnant. Am I Allowed? And she's left me to write the next edition. Um, she taught me everything. So in, in her honour, I, I created a, um, a non uh, an unincorporated charity called uh, the Beverly Beach Project. And this is so, when push comes to shove, can serve everyone. I don't want to say, no, you can't have help from us because you don't have enough money. So we have this access fund, Beverly Beach Project. And what I want to do, if a woman doesn't have any money, we can pay for one of our birth keepers to attend her birth. And we we have done it. We've been doing it for the last two years. We are completely depleted now in funds. Mm -hmm. um, and what you do is if, if you train with us and I get you a job, like I can't guarantee you work, but I get an awful lot of inquiries. So if you're in that person's area, I can say, would you like to do this job? Then you have to put 10% back into the Beverly Beach project so we can keep the, the fund topped right. up so we can serve low income yeah. families for free. And unfortunately, those funds have really, really gone down. Um, mm -hmm. We've had a lot of people use the access fund, but I want to be able to serve this to anyone. So I'm trying to raise as much money as possible and the Beverly Beach Project so we can serve the world for free if they can't afford it. And I don't want this to be about money. Um, it's such a horrible topic, isn't it? And I think people have got issues with money. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a dodgy, energetic thing to talk about. But I think mm -hmm. if we can actually, money can be an amazing resource to help more people no, no. if you've got plenty of money you can help millions and millions yeah, I, yeah. I totally agree i totally agree i wish it's i had that i don't yet yeah. it's all lack that's yeah. that's the system it's like yeah. all fossil fuels and we own them and you have yeah. to buy yeah. Yeah, for them. there's a lot of poverty obsession isn't there yeah and it's there to keep us in About those boxes it's just more constructs everything is abundant we can have everything that we want Absolutely. and it's that mindset and we talk about that Absolutely. you charge five quid for that you know oh, <laughs> got to, yeah. we've got to get out of that mindset we've got to know? do we can make a bigger difference well we with... need as many donations as possible to the beverly beach project so i can continue to um send out our amazing birth keepers um yeah. and also we want enough money to be able to offer people scholarships to train with yeah. us because we okay. want, we need an army. I want when push comes to birth centres for people who don't feel safe to give birth at home, who can't give birth at home, they may experience domestic violence. I would just want to have uh, options for women. Right yeah. now, we're filling the gaps, and we are attending hundreds of births, not millions, but hundreds, which is great. And last year, I can tell you, we had a sixty-eight percent home birth rate, and a hundred percent of babies who were birthed with when push comes to shove breastfed, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. I'm really happy about that, but I'm not going to rest on my laurels. You know, no. I want to do better. And I want to, I just want to do whatever I'm meant to be doing. I'm just going to listen. I, I don't really like to make too many plans because I think when you try and make things happen in your own strength, you, can, you kind of tend to go into ego, don't you? And then things can um, yeah, start to slow down. So I'm just going to, I know what I want to do, but I'm not going to put too much emphasis and i have to meet this agenda just wake yeah. it up every morning saying where would you have me go what would you have me do that sort of thing yeah. amazing who knows where it'll take me who knows is is the details of that on your website because what i'll do is i want to put as much information in the description below for people to to get hold of um yeah i'll send you all the links and please then, but That'd if you go to 
Uh, we've got a new website coming soon. The current one is shit. Um, <laughs> but the information is there. It's when push comes to shark.co.uk. And you can find us on Telegram, Awakened yeah. Pregnancy and Birth. Okay. Um, we have a YouTube channel. Um, I'm on Twitter, but I don't know how to use it. Um, but yeah, just if look, if you need help with your birth, we can provide you with a birth practitioner. If you want a one to one, know your options, you can contact me. If you want to train with us, that would be amazing. Because imagine what will happen in a few years where everything collapses. You're going to need the wise woman in your area. Yes. You know, so, and whether you want to do a four-day doula course or a year's training, your call. Cool. But we're there if you want to become empowered and, and help women and be with women. Amazing. Nikita, thank you so much. You're an absolute star. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, you too, my love. Thank you so much.